WhatsApp, call centers, voice, video, chat. All of these things are things that we don't normally build as developers because we're thinking about things like libraries and languages, React and Angular. But when we work in business, when we work with a company, often we'll be needing to create real world products. And one such example, which we'll be looking at in today's video is implementing voice chat. And this is going to be using a technology called Vox Implant. And we're going to see how a developer can build up a whole call center from scratch, just using things like JavaScript syntax, which is pretty cool. And this is going to be things like those phone calls you get where people type in a number to get two different options, like one for accounts or two for technical support. And we're going to see how we can do this all just using code, which is going to be really cool. So let's just jump straight into it. A big thank you to Vox Implant for sponsoring this video. If you're already a developer working inside of a business, learning this kind of stuff and implementing it is the kind of stuff that gets you promoted. And if you're not a developer, just skilling up on these kinds of technologies and having them as part of your resume that you can create call centers from scratch by yourself is the kind of stuff that really makes you stand out from the crowd. So in this video, we'll be doing this in a few different parts. First, we'll be having a look at signing up to Vox Implant and utilizing their software. And then lastly, we'll have a look at building an actual web app where we implement their software, which will be pretty cool. So let's jump into that right now. First, we'll head over to Google and type in Vox Implant. We'll select the very first website. If you haven't heard of Vox Implant, they do really cool stuff in the cloud for voice, video, chat, and lots more. We're gonna sign up to a brand new account, which comes with some free credit. So to do this, we're just gonna select sign up at the top and select platform. Here, we'll fill out our user details and then just simply select sign up. So I've got the dashboard up and running. And the first thing I wanna do is the training package because it comes with $5 and it's gonna help me figure out exactly how this platform works. And here for the training, I had lots of different options to do. I wasn't really sure yet what I wanted to do. So I've decided just to go with the calling app users. That seems like a pretty standard one. And I shouldn't be able to learn everything I need to here. So I clicked in and went ahead with that one. And so when I'm doing normal tutorials or documentation, it's actually quite hard to follow along. Yet this one was almost like holding my hand because right now when I have a look at it and I go through it, I found that it had really clear instructions of what I needed to do. But not only that, it had little hover icons and stairs on things I needed to click in. So here I'm creating my first application. And for this application, I'm going to call it WhatsApp. And as part of this, I'm going to give it a description. So I'm thinking maybe something like a WhatsApp clone, as well as maybe some storage. And then I'm all done. I can click create and I've got my application up and running. The next step was to browse into the application to properly configure it. So I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going into the scenario section here. And here I'm going to create a scenario, which is analogous to creating a situation of what's happening. So in this case, what I want to do is sort of create a scene or something where it shows that I'm going to create a user that's doing an interaction, whether it's calling or receiving a call. So as part of this, I've got some code here that I need to put in this code. When I understand it, it sort of works just like JavaScript. So there is this event listener and this event listener is basically listening for a user who's calling and this is then logged into a variable, which is pretty cool. So we'll actually set the variable to call above and then we're going to be able to reference this call variable and add listeners to it as well. Let's fast forward to have a look at the code. We're requiring a module.player and creating these variables for call and player. We're also creating the main event listener now, and this is going to assign a username as well as the call. Then we're going to listen to the call. And once it's connected, we're going to play an MP3 from an online URL and then hang up the call once it's finished. So this is a pretty good structure here for a scenario. And now we can have a look at how we implement this with users. And so the next thing I did was jump on and create a user. I just created myself here with a generic password that I could use. And I'm assuming that I'll need to hook this into the application later on where I'm utilizing a certain user to create different calls so that we know where it's coming from or where it's going to. Next, as part of this tutorial, I need to create a route or a routing essentially, which is the way whether a certain rule is implemented or not based on the phone call coming in. So for this routing rule, I'll give it a star pattern and attach our scene and we're ready to test this out. So we've got some testing tools here at the top right, and this allows us to test whether all these phone features actually even work before implementing them into code. 
So I'm going to allow my microphone here and put in my username and password and create a emulated phone where I can test out whether this phone call is working or not. And finally, we run a test of the routing rule to see how this all works. And it creates us an inbound call, which we can answer to listen to the MP3 with the script we just generated in our scene. Hi. This is the Vox Implant bot. Great, so I've now figured out this tutorial in terms of how this more or less works using JavaScript. And it's time to move on to building this into like a website or a web app or something cool to create a real like call center or WhatsApp app. So for this part, what I'm gonna do is head down to the bottom and we wanna have a look at the documentation and tutorials. And what I have found here is there's quite a lot to go through. I wanna get started on something more basic. So I had a look at getting started and then I had a look at tutorials. I jumped into calls and I wanna create a web widget. I think that'll be cool. So the web widget does a few different things here. We can do voice over a computer, essentially doing a call to maybe a Vox implant user or a SIP number or even phone number. We can dial the number inside of the web widget itself. We can check the microphone, make sure that we can connect. So this is what it should look like. So we'll have a bit of a widget that looks like a phone number thing here. And to create this, we'll have to do a application with a user. And we've sort of already done these steps, so we should be able to reuse them and then we create a brand new scenario. So what I'm thinking is let's jump straight into that and create this new scenario. The first thing is we'll need to create a microphone scenario. So we've got some code here on the right hand side that basically does this. I'm going to copy this in and we'll jump into our application that we created earlier and create this new scene. So let's select that and let's head to scenarios. And over here, what we're going to do is create a brand new one. And for this one, I'm going to name it something like, for example, mic check. And I think we can just copy paste this code right in there. And let's have a look at what it's doing. So it's requiring a couple of modules here and it's going to do an event listener here for call alerting. It's going to create a variable called recorder and it's also going to create a prompt here where it says, hello, welcome to Vox Implant, testing microphone, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to try out this code. So let's select here to save it. And I'm going to probably have a look at the next step here, which is to answer the phone call once we do the mic check. So we can answer it as a Vox Implant user or as a phone number, we're gonna to have to create a separate scenario to do this. So because I don't have a phone number or SIP address, I'm just gonna use the Vox implant user and copy the code here for this new scenario. I'm gonna create a brand new scene for this and I'm gonna call this call itself. And I'm gonna make sure that I spell that correctly. So let's actually rename that and call it call itself. And we'll copy paste the code here to answer that phone call or forward it essentially from one call to another. So we've got our two scenes now. And the next thing we need to do is some routing. Now, if you're doing a actual phone number that you're calling, you'll need to buy a phone number from Vox Implant, but I'm not doing this. I'm just using a existing call. So next I need to create a routing rule to test the microphone. So we're gonna copy this code across here to the routing and we wanna test mic. So the test mic uses the pattern test mic, which is easy enough and we'll attach it to the scenario of mic check. Simple enough. We'll also need to create a one more route here. So we've got the route for answering the phone call itself. So let's create that right now. And that rule will attach to the answer scenario that we created earlier. So I head back into my routing rules here and I'm gonna create a brand new one. And for this one here, I'm just gonna call it maybe like answer call or answer. And we'll give it a star pattern and attach it to the call itself as the scenario. And with that done, we just make sure that it's underneath the mic test because there is a priority or essentially a way where these are done in order. Okay, so there is an application component to this, which we're going to take a look at now, and we can simply download it. There's already one configured for us by Vox Implant, which should make life a lot easier. I had a quick look at it, and it's running view. I haven't used it before, but I know React, and I'm hoping it's more or less the same. I copied the repository to my GitHub folder, and I opened it up in VS Code. I'll probably have to install all the modules and configure it properly, so let's do that right now. 
I had a look and there's a .env.example file, which I'm sure we'll have to configure. But first, let's install all the modules by running yarn install. After that, the .env.example file needs to be renamed. So I renamed this to just .env so it actually can work. And then I need to set the app user and app password and the phone number we'll be calling. So what I did was I jumped back in and made sure that I'm using the right user. I copied the username in and I pasted that in and it also needs the application name. So I pasted that in afterwards. I put in the password that I'm using for this application. I'm guessing that if you have your own build module for this, if you've got your own login for users, you can put something in manually. But for the time being, we're just going to use this as a test. And finally, I'm using a simple test for the mic. So I'm going to fill the app number to mic test or test mic anyway. And I'm going to fill in a virtual phone number, which is just for testing as well, in case we wanted to try out calling later as well. But with all of these things configured, we can now try out the application by running yarn serve. And this brings up the web application with the web widget where we'll be using and it runs this up on port 8080 on localhost. So let's actually open this up and we can see that it's up and running. We can enable the mic and start using it. Let's test it by doing a mic check. Welcome to Vox Implant Testing Service. Please record your message. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you were able to hear your own voice, then you have configured your audio recording device. Okay, good. I've got the basics up and running with this web widget. Let's see if we can now turn this into a more real like call center where we select one, two, and three and go down the prompts to redirect to a certain number. So what I'm going to do is head over to the speech section and we're going to select the multi-level menu. Now this is the fun part because we've got this scenario set up here that we can use to select one, two, and three and get different prompts and items that happen in our scene based on those selections. Let's have a look. So if you select one, we get the time of day and this loops back to the main menu once more. But then you can select two and three, which have different option selects and they basically forward the call to somewhere else. So let's see how we set up this scenario with the code. Realistically, this will be quite easy. We only have to copy the code over here and optimize it if we need and copy paste that into the scenario we've already created. Okay, let's give this a test. Press one to save time. Press two enter current time and UK time zone is 756. Press one to save time. Press two enter extension number. Press three to forward call to specified US number. And there we go. We've got a call center running in just about 10 minutes. And that's pretty cool because if you have a look at this syntax, we can understand how it's working. Like this section here where we might want to call an extension. We're simply grabbing the extension a person places in and passing it as a data variable. This data variable might check if someone placed in the number 100 and forwards the call to John Connor. Otherwise, it says that there's no person with this extension. This is sort of the power that you get being able to customize this in terms of JavaScript, which is really cool. Much easier than other ways that you can normally set up call centers. Now, the things that we've looked at here so far are just some of the basics even of what's possible using Vox Implant. You could create your own applications like WhatsApp and others, basically utilizing some of these features to create your own call centers or apps that basically allow you to interact between different users. And that's pretty cool. If, for example, you're working in a business, there's other ways you can do messaging as well as voice and video, even streaming video, which is pretty awesome as well. It's really up to you guys to explore and test out the possibilities out there, but that's what we always do as programmers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely have a look at Vox Implant. I'll add a link in the description below where you guys can do that. And again, thank you for them to sponsor this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.